project, I decided to gather school supply donations for children in Mexico who are less fortunate. So my central question. My project, my central question was, what are the steps necessary to get the MILA students involved in raising school supplies for children in Mexico? So my outline for my presentation. So for my presentation today, I will be discussing as to why I chose this project, my mentor, Tony Alarcon, Iglesia Bautista Cruel, which is actually the church that I partnered with, with donating these school supplies, and I'll be accompanying with in the summer. I'll also be talking about the theme of the project presentation today and how it worked out for me. I'll also be talking about Global Scholars and the impact it had on me, my next steps, some of my failures, and my thank yous. So why I chose this project? For my project, I want to make an attempt to make a change in the education for children in Mexico. With everything that's going on, especially COVID, kids are still having to do classrooms virtually, classrooms through Zoom. They still have to wear masks at school and they don't have the opportunity to share school supplies. And I know that for my cousins, it has been an extreme struggle in their daily lives. And I can't even believe to imagine what it's like for those less fortunate. And then I want to find a way to give that to both my family and my community in Mexico. They've done everything for me and I wanted to have the chance to do something for them. And then I've heard many stories over the years from people going on this pilgrimage and mission trip that I'll talk about and how giving those donations in person has made a true impact on their lives. And then in this picture, you can actually see my cousin giving her own donation of a backpack and the bottom is me in Mexico with my little cousin. Mm -hmm. So my mentor, for my project, my mentor was Tony Alarcon, and she is current head youth pastor at my grandmother's church that I mentioned earlier, Iglesia Bautista Cruel. She's been a family friend of ours for many years and obviously many more to come. Um, she is just amazing. Um, she also was the best fit for my project because she is only one of the few that understands a little bit of English at my church. When I was speaking with her, it was done mostly through Spanish and I'm pretty good at Spanish, but for the most part, we did have some difficulty with that. And another fun fact about Tony is that last summer she baptized me. And you can actually see in this picture that it's me in the middle. And then on the left side, we have Tony with the black shorts. I mean, the black shirt and the pink shorts. And then we have head pastor on the other side in the black top <laughs> and the khaki shorts. And then her and her five children. Hmm. And on the bottom, we can see Tony actually going to the mission trip herself, giving out school supply donations. And I'll talk a little bit more about the mission trip in the next slide. So the church in general, Iglesia Bautista Cruel. So this church is actually located in Monterrey, Mexico. It's around three blocks, I'd say, from my grandmother's church. And it is a Christian Protestant church. And then what the church basically does is that every year towards the end of July, the church will make a mission trip to basically go up to Galena, Mexico. And in this mission trip, around a group of 10 people will sign up. And then what the group does is that they'll take a three hour bus ride from Monterey, Mexico to Galena, Mexico. And then when they get there, the group will go around and they'll preach, they'll pray, and basically spread the word of God to the people of Galena, Mexico. And then at the, towards the end of the mission trip, they'll give donations to children. And they've always talked about how an unforgettable experience it has been and how it's truly made an impact and what is basically their passion on going back each year. So then in the top picture is actually the pastor playing with some of the children there. And the bottom picture is actually me and my family at one of the church <coughs> services. So my goal. So for my project, my goal was to fill as many backpacks as I could with school supplies. Um, and it was also to make sure that every child in Glenna receives some sort of donation. So the church itself that my grandmother attends is not as fortunate as us. It's obviously here in Millis. And you can actually see in this picture that this is the, these are the donations that they gathered from two or three years ago prior to COVID. And obviously you can tell that it's not enough to satisfy each ch child's need. And with these toys, they'd have to share with them. And then it would just be sad not getting able to see each child with some sort of toy. I also wanted to educate my community about making a change outside the United States and outside Millis and possibly inform them about making their decision about what their senior project would be for next year. So I want to talk a little bit about my promoting my project and my advertising. So I had senior project presentation day, so I'd like to give a huge thank you to Delisi. He was such a great help and he actually made me this flyer right here. Um, 
You can actually see the poster that I also made for my senior project presentation day. And I wanted to create my own poster to basically promote my project in some way. So I got a table curtain, I got school supplies, I actually made my own bucket with labeled donations to get some cash donations. And as students walked by, I had note cards with me with some of the research that I've done as to why they should donate to my senior project. And I also found out that using the Venmo QR code was a huge success because I would literally see students walking by with their phones and with a matter of one minute, they would scan my poster and I would give receive a donation right on my phone. So then my next steps. So my next steps for my project is I haven't really completed my project. I will be traveling to Mexico from July 19th to July 29th this summer. And I plan on packing an extra suitcase with all donations. And I basically end, will end up using the money that I received some, so, some donations to pay for that extra luggage. I was also thinking about contacting the airline and discussing my senior project and figuring out a way that maybe they could help me out in placing all of these donations in. And then I will arrive, I will arrive in Mexico Ju July 19th and I'll spend two to three days with my family. <coughs> and then I end up, I'll end up taking a bus to Atlanta, Mexico probably the third day I'm there. And then I'll finally have the opportunity to give each child a backpack there, which I'm super excited about and honestly is just making me so excited for the summer this year, considering that all I've done for my project. And then on the top picture is actually from three years ago when the group went down to go see the children and some donations they had in their hands. And the bottom picture is actually the church that the mission trip goes on each year. And you can see some of the children in the picture. So my outcome, for my project, my outcome was I raised $404. I raised this money through Venmo, through Cash App, and through cash donations. I raised 22 backpacks in total. I also raised 39 folders, 28 binders, and 18 boxes from Staples. I'd like to thank the Scopinetti family because um, Mrs. Scopinetti actually donated these donated these boxes from Staples, and they're so convenient because when I go to travel, just packaging all of these into a luggage is gonna be so easy for me. And then each box from Staples contains pens, pencils, crayons, erasers, highlighters, markers, and glue. So basically everything you need to have the child succeed at school. And then these are some of the backpacks I have donated, and some of my failures. So some of my failures I had in my project was that it took a little while for the middle school principal to actually respond <coughs> to me. Um, the principal took too long because I found out later that he did have COVID, he went on vacation, and it was honestly okay because at that time I'd already done enough research and I've already done enough gathering of donations and money, so it was okay for me to go on without him. And another failure I would say I had to kind of a challenge was that I was figuring out on whether I should ship or bring donations on the trip. And I'll say decided to bring the donations because shipping them out is obviously not as safe. We can't guarantee that all donations will, be, will get there on time. We also can't guarantee as if what the pricing will be because the traveling of the products from the United States to Mexico has gone up so much over the past year that it is way too much money. And another challenge I had, but I don't really see it as a challenge, was obviously the language barrier. Me having to communicate mostly through Spanish and not having the time to use any English at all, and then having to talk to my mentor tell me through Spanish, through writing, through talking, it was just kind of a challenge not being able to express everything I wanted to. And then I did have some students messing with my donation box, which was honestly, in my opinion, was 100% okay. I mean, under, I understand at the end of the day, no one meant any harm by it. And, you know, it's funny. I'm just gonna take it in a lighthearted way as funny. And then my thank yous. I'd like to thank my mother. I'd also like to thank my mentor, Tony. Um, she was obviously a huge help. And then I wouldn't be able to do this project without her. She was always by my side if I needed her to talk to her or honestly get any insight or even pictures from this presentation about what I should do with my project. I also like to give a huge thank you to Mr. Caulfield. Mr.
Mr. Caulfield, I would consider it him as my mentor inside of school. If I had trouble with doing donations, with figuring out how to advertise it, he was always there. And I'd like to give a big thank you to him. He is, he, I had this box in his room for like months on end, and he never complained about it. He was always there for me, and if I needed anything, I knew I could count on him in school. I'd also like to thank the advisories of Mr. Abraham and Mr. Caulfield. They both decided to do my senior project as the end of the year advisory project, and they were overall a huge help. I'd also like to thank Ms. Dipper and Mr. Neville. They both allowed me to enter their classrooms to receive school donations, and I remember myself the first day of the senior project presentation, Mr. Neville let me literally enter his classroom and choose out donations that I wanted to bring on the trip. I'd also like to thank all students and faculty who brought in donations or even donated money. As you can see on the side, it's all like Venmo donations, cash app donations, and I'd also like to thank members of the Leo's Club. Um, they were always there for me. I would present with them every two weeks when we'd have a meeting, and they were always willing to listen to what I had to say about my senior project. And then Global Scholars. So I've been a Global Scholars member since my freshman year, and one of the questions they asked me is, how is my project globally inspired? So my project was globally inspired by making greater change and greater impact than outside the United States and Norris, Massachusetts. It's also encouraged students to think of ways on how they can donate and help out outside their own community being in Norris. And I even had the chance to talk to some juniors who are in Global Scholars currently on how this could be their project for next year. And I gave some insight and some tips. And here's my work cited page and any questions.